So autoimmune disease is unfortunately predominantly affecting women. Um, and what I find is that the major um, triggers for autoimmune disease onset are major hormonal changes, um, and then of course very stressful periods in people's lives. Um, but often, again, those hormonal shifts, so puberty, postpartum, menopause, those are the times when often women will develop autoimmune symptoms. Okay, so predominantly for age of onset for autoimmune disease, we're seeing people in their um, 40s and, and late 40s, early 50s time, and, and I would say that was the same for men and women. Certainly it can happen earlier. Um, I've seen people as young as five who've been diagnosed with um, chronic inflammatory bowel disease, for example. But um, typically people in those sort of late 40s, early 50s. So, of course, autoimmune disease has lots of very important umbrellas for things that are um, creating the symptoms that people have, but the type of symptoms is really quite specific to the type of autoimmune disease. Um, if I had to say that there was one common initiating symptom, it would be fatigue. So, fatigue, I think, comes from um, again, that broader, the body is not functioning optimally anymore. Uh, with autoimmune disease, of course, the immune system is attacking the cells of the person's body. Um, that's a very uh, uh, nutrient-dependent process, and so people become very deficient and very exhausted, I think, because of that increased metabolism and the increased use of their nutrients. So when autoimmune disease starts and somebody is first exploring what's going on, you know, and starting to investigate seeing healthcare professionals, whether I'm the first person they see or whether they've seen all sorts of specialists and such before me, um, the hallmark is that they have symptoms that weren't there last month or last year. And sometimes they've come on a little bit slowly, but sometimes it's just seeming like it's out of the blue. And again, it typically starts with some fatigue, uh, but then unique to each autoimmune condition would be sort of aches and pains if it's more of a rheumatological condition or, um, you know, fluctuations in metabolism if it's more of a thyroid or an adrenal condition. Um, and so the hallmark, I guess, is that the, the symptom comes on seemingly out of nowhere. Um, and it's very confusing. It's very startling for people. I, I love that question because normal versus not normal uh, is something that people ask about all the time and um, one of the things that I like to remind people is that common is very different from normal. So it is common for people to be fatigued as they get older. It's common for people to have dysfunctions in their body. It's never normal to have dysfunctions. It's never normal to be requiring naps and so uh, you know, if people have those symptoms, regardless of whether you're 20 or whether you're 50 or 60, it's not normal. With autoimmune disease being such a broad um, category and having so many different types of autoimmune disease, I think it's been really helpful to see so many different patients from so many different um, aspects of autoimmune dysfunction because it really brings home that this is a collection of diseases that have at its core a dysfunction in the immune system and a dysfunction in the inflammatory cycles because our immune system initiates inflammation to heal us and when disease happens is when that inflammation is not checked and the inflammation continues and the immune system continues to trigger it. And so when treating autoimmune disease from that larger global, you know, more umbrella-like perspective, it's really very much about trying to shift immune function out of attacking itself and back into healthy immune function where the immune system is targeting viruses and bacteria and cancer cells the way that it's supposed to.